Hey guys, welcome back. All right, so today we're gonna unbox some shoes. Now this video, I'm gonna show these shoes that I got, talk about it a little bit, but it's be probably a little more discussion on just the type of shoes I like to run in. Now, people might be like, well, why does this matter? Why does it matter about running? I thought you like to make stuff or be creatures or whatever. Well, by running, keep my fitness up. And when I keep my fitness up, that means that uh, I perform better when I do droids or creatures or whatever, just general day-to-day -day stuff. I feel better when I'm fit. So I like to run, it all ties together. So other things you might enjoy on this channel are improved by me doing exercise. So here we go. As you can see, it is a pair of ultras. Now, I don't buy shoes very often, so it's kind of like a special event for me when I do. Um, and what's more special about these is that these are hopefully the right shoe. Ah, they are. Ta da! These are a road shoe. Now, I haven't really bought road shoes. I kind of have, I'll talk about that in a second, in quite a long time. So I got these obnoxious blue road shoes. Now, I've been running trails pretty much since I moved to California. There's trails everywhere. And about a few months ago, we moved. In my last house, I was riding my road bike and I was running on trails. And now I feel like there's more mountain bike trails here. So I'm going to be on my mountain bike more, but there's more road to run on here. So I'll probably be running more road. So I figured I should get some actual dedicated road shoes. Now I've been wearing ultras since 2014, but they're all trail shoes and I love the way they fit. Um, I did a video a few months back where I had an issue with a pair. Put these down here for a second. The Ultra Superiors. And this is the pair that I did a video on. This is the only pair I've had any issue with. And they actually are really comfortable and they're really grippy and they've held up really well. But this shoe squeaks like crazy because they put the wrong size sole on there. And you can see it's bigger. I did a whole video on this. I still like their shoes, so I bought another pair. Uh, actually, I, I meant to do a follow-up on these because a few months ago I posted a thing, probably almost a year ago now, uh, that these shoes squeaked and it was an issue. And complained to the company and they sent me another pair. So this is a double unboxing today. I actually did an unboxing video of these, but I forgot to post it because I think I cursed in it or something. I wanted to edit it out and I totally forgot. So they sent me a replacement. I've never put them on. So this is a replacement for this shoe. It's the same shoe, just obviously a different color. Brand new pair. So as soon as these wear out, I'll be switching to these. The pair that squeaks has been great to run in. They just sound awful when I walk. But anyway, back to the road shoes. Um, I'm hoping that these kind of give me the same feel as the other Ultras. The fitment and the shape looks really similar. So I'm excited about that. I'm going to walk around in these tomorrow pretty much all day and just try to get my foot shape kind of impressed in them. Now, a thing I think I talked about before is that when I run, my favorite shoes to run in are these super, super minimalist. There's barely any sole here. It's just rubber. There's not really any padding at all. They're uh, they're, it's as close as you can be to running barefoot. Just a little bit of protection for your feet. I love these. And I've got, this is a road shoe and this is a trail shoe. These are my favorites, but there are reasons why sometimes I want a little extra protection on my feet. And technically last year I bought a pair of road shoes, these Hoka Pro Flies, which if you look at how giant padding these are compared to this, you know, it's it's crazy. This is not not my my favorite thing by a long shot. But I haven't run in in really padded shoes in a, in a, quite a long time, and I have a lot of ultra runner friends, and tons of them swear by Hoka's. And I work in the film industry, and on set, almost half the crew people walk around and wearing Hoka's. Now I can say that these are really nice to walk around in. They're very very comfortable, but I do not like running in them. When I bought these, I got them last year. Uh, I may have posted a video of unboxing them. I can't remember. But I, I got these because I was on a crew for a runner for the Badwater 135. Um, the runner is Lindsay Phoenix. And as a crew member, I was going to have to pace with her over this run. The run is 135 miles long. 
that goes from Badwater Basin in Death Valley all the way to Mount Whitney. I should do a whole video on that. That was an amazing experience. But I bought these shoes for that. And the reason is that it's so hot there because the race is in July. It was 120 degrees at 11 p.m. when her wave started in the race. So the pavement gets over 200 degrees. So I think it was 237 degrees or something crazy. And I wanted to have some padding between my foot and the pavement because I didn't know how hot. Like if I'm going to walk in something thin like this, are my feet going to get burned? So I bought these specifically for that. And I realized how much I hate running in them. All the problems I had before I became a minimalist runner came back almost immediately when I started wearing these. Um, I used to have shin splints and knee pains and hip pains. This was pre-2010. And in 2010, I switched to completely barefoot. I started running totally barefoot and all those problems went away. I used to only be able to run maybe seven miles. And if I really pushed it, I could do a half marathon distance. It was painful and be done and be all beat up. And once I switched to going barefoot um, in these minimalist shoes, uh, now I can run re really far, like not a problem. So after that, I've added back in a little bit of padding, but not too much. So these are kind of in between. They've got a, quite a bit more padding than my other shoes. But one thing that's good about the Ultras is that they are zero drop. So there's no lift in the heel like the Hoka's. The heel is taller than the ball of the foot. So they're, they're flat inside, they have a nice wide toe box. So my stride should feel about the same as normal. It's just a little extra cushion. And we'll see how it feels, I don't know. I'm give it a shot and maybe in a few months I'll do a review on them or if I really hate them, I'll review them sooner. But let's take this thing out and feel how flexible they are. Hey, what the heck are these called? I didn't even think I covered that. I'm, I think it's an S Monte, what is this called? Yeah, the Escalante 3. So this is actually the previous version. They have a new version out since this, but I'm a cheap ass and I was like, well, do I want to get the new one? They've, they're still making the same model. The last one's got good reviews. So I got the last year's model and it was a lot cheaper. It was like 50 bucks cheaper for last year's colors and everything. I have put them on so we can have a look. So here's the inside and here's the outside. They're pretty bright colors, which I like. Some people, it's not their thing, but I dig them. The uppers feel just like my other ultra shoes. So if you've worn these before and you like the fit, I've found them to be very consistent. I've seen people write things like, oh, this this one's not as good as the other one. I, I feel like they're very consistent. I've been wearing them since 2014. And I've, they've all fit about the same. So these feel the same. Different shoe, but upper, same shape. Nice wide toe box. It's nice and level inside. Like I said, there's no uh, lift in the back. It's zero drop. So your heel and your ball of your foot are the same uh, height from the ground, which is for if you're used to minimalist running where you're running barefoot or on the ball of your foot, it's much better because when you run in hokas, your foot's already in an angle. So if you land forefoot, you end up landing kind of flat and it just feels terrible. These shoes are, these shoes are slightly, again, a little softer than I would prefer all the time. However, I think once they're broken in a little bit and I squish them down, I get like 100 miles or so in them, they're going to start to feel better. Some people like to replace their shoes after, you know, 200 miles. I got to switch them. I'm like the opposite. I like them when they're broken in and they lose some of the cushion. I like less cushion, better. But I like to have enough material here that if I step on something sharp or a rock or something that it's not going to slow me down. I can go a little faster and um, specifically running in the evening or at dusk when it's harder to see, that's when a little extra protection comes in handy versus a shoe like this. It's really thin, not much protection. So I forgot, like, for those of you who don't know, I had crazy knee surgeries, three of them in less than a year. And I keep meaning to make some videos about the recovery process from that because since my surgeries, I've now done three marathons and running, cycling, a little bit less flexible. I can't go as fast as I used to, but I can still do the distances and stay active and everything. And um, I feel like I should do some videos about the recovery process because some people have a lot of trouble with it. I, I didn't have it easy, especially after the third surgery. It was the, some tricky, tricky aspects to recovery, but the running is good. The shoes help the running. These shoes were bad on the knee. 
Hopefully these shoes are better. But anyway, I'll stop rambling here. Thanks for stopping by. I'll be back with some more like makery stuff videos soon. I got a whole bunch of things in progress and it should be fun. Thanks for stopping by again. Said that already. I'm out of here. Bye.